Hey everyone, I'm going old school back to what I used to do. This is our esthetician chat. So I'm actually going live both on Instagram and on Facebook today. Um, we have a lot of stuff that's happening right now. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy right now, right? I did a live on Smooth Skin Supply today talking about, you know, what we have going on. A lot of people don't realize that we're manufactured here in North America. So I've already gotten people that have reached out scared. They can't get product. Um, I am working from home. My daughter is working from home. She's dancing at home as well. We have now virtual dance classes. So there's a lot of stuff that's changed in a very fast amount of time um, that I think has caught a lot of us on off guard. Um, I think a lot of us have never had this kind of situation. So we really, we just didn't know what to do. And um, I think a lot of us are in panic mode, which drives up stress, which changes the way we um, conduct business. And I have, out of all of it, I've actually been really calm, which is very shocking for me because I'm usually, um, sometimes I can get a little worked up, but I'm not, I'm not really worked up right now. Um, I'm actually really in strategic planning mode. Uh, Maxine Drake and I did a really amazing webinar in her group um, last Monday about, you know, doing business when a recession is going to hit or a huge change is coming. And we both shared with uh, the group when the last recession hit, which for me was 2008, which is the year I started my Sabrezo Wax brand. So I didn't really pay attention to what was happening around me because I had my head so down and so focused on working. But I think this is different because it hit fast and this is not a reaction to the economy. It's a reaction now to people's lives. And we have now been changed and have been told that we have to change the way we do business. Um, a lot of it is, is interesting for me, um, twofold. One, because I have, I feel I'm always prepared for the what ifs. And two, um, it's an interesting time to see how people are reacting. You know, we have a lot of people arguing on Facebook. I personally have actually unplugged from Facebook. Um, I really only go on Facebook if I need to, but I actually yesterday stopped myself from the scroll. And we all know what the scroll is, right? Where we're just like, on our phone, just scrolling. I'm not scrolling anymore on Facebook because there's too much drama happening and people over panicking. Hey, Char, love you too. Um, so it's been really, really um, calming since I've unplugged from Facebook. I am not a news watcher, so I don't watch the news because in my opinion, it's a bunch of opinionated people giving me their opinion and kind of throwing up all over me. So I don't really do the news anymore, my husband can tell you. Um, and now that I'm kind of unplugging from Facebook and really not going on there unless I absolutely have to, it's actually kind of changed my perspective on really what's happening in the world now, right? So I really would like to open up dialogue and really talk about what we find is interesting right now because we have a lot of people who are in panic mode. Um, we're in panic mode because to be honest, to be a small business owner, it's not for the faint of heart. We ha we're on a roller coaster every single day. We don't know from the time our eyeballs open to when we close if we're going to have some type of income or any income. So that's part of it. The other part of it is really just understanding what it is that we really want to continue to do in the event that something in, goes worse, right? We don't think about that. You know, I have a mentoring group and I've been talking to them about showing their levels of sanitation and providing um, uh, their customers with that complete and utter trust that they've always had in you, but taking it a step further. A lot of us want to go and be relaxed. We want to be in stress-free environments, but a lot of us are so kind of frozen that we don't think about it in that way. We all, almost turn off our business owner mind and we go straight into consumer mind like, oh, the toilet paper's out. What does that mean for my business? I can't get water. What does that mean for my business? Like we are, we're not 
we're not utilizing why and understanding why people come to us. They come to us for a stress free, even for an hour to be in a stress free environment. So I've challenged my all of my folks um, in my mentoring group to over saturate their their social media with their sanitation and explaining what they're sanitizing. And it's very interesting to see how many people are not doing it. I know a lot of us have come to a point where we are closing because we feel we should. Some of us cannot close. We don't have a choice. And we feel guilty because we don't have a choice to close. So it's been interesting to watch. Um, you know, I, I am still doing business. I am still, um, we've cut our, our time down for our staff. So we've cut, you know, 50% of our staff time. And um, we have seen an increase in business. And I'll tell you why. We are primarily online. You know, 80% of my business is online. And we are um, prepared for the continual, but we never were prepared for the upswing. So last year, I launched our marketing club. I provide for every person who wants to have their own Save Brazil website, they can sell my products online. And um, they've seen an increase as well. Because a year ago, I was forcing people to get into that mindset to have multiple streams of income. And then I was providing it for you. So basically, I was handing you a business in a box. And the amount of people who poo pooed all of it are the same people who are now running to me and my developer saying that I need a website when I was telling you that people will still spend even if they're restricted from seeing your face. And I'm an advocate of having a business that's on a 24 hour clock and not a 12 or six or eight hour clock. So, you know, we really are seeing a really big increase on online sales. Amazon stock is still super high. Amazon has now said that they're trying to figure out how to keep up with the demand um, because people are still buying. So if you don't have a plan in place for your customers to be able to buy their products from you, now is the time to do it. I can't preach that any, uh, any harder. It is not hard. If you're in my Save Brazil Wax training group, I'm getting ready to start doing some simple tutorials on how to send a PayPal invoice to people, on how to set up a button on your website if you want people to buy something, how easy it is to set up you know, your USPS account to ship something, or a UPS, I use FedEx, or either one, to ship something. People still want what they want, even if they don't physically see your face. And here's the thing, if they're not gonna get it from you, they're gonna find someone else to get it to. So if you're not talking to them about what you're doing for those folks who don't feel comfortable coming to your businesses, now is the time to put that in place. That should be part of your SOPs. I'm going down now to Maxine Drake and quoting her. That's standard operation procedures. You should have those kinds of procedures specifically for this reason, because people are still gonna buy. You know why you know this and I know this? We're still buying because the first place I've been going to to figure out this toilet paper situation was Amazon. Then I ran over to Whole Foods this morning and got into that zoo. I mean, it's 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 funny and we never thought we would be here. And a lot of us have resisted this whole online business. But this is all people are relying on and this is all we have. We are a business of providing services. When those services are unable to be provided for, you still need a way to earn money. You still need a way to earn income. And for me and my business, retail is always going to be around. It's never not going to be here. So if you're not in my Save Brazil Wax training group, I would encourage you to be in there. I'm gonna be coming in there live. I'm gonna be showing some things that are really simple for you to do. I'm gonna be encouraging you to start putting those SOPs together for your customers and telling them you still love them, you still uh, care for them, and that you understand when they make tough decisions. However, you still have what they need for them, even if they don't even step foot into your business. I encourage you to do this. Because some of you are closing your doors and you know you can't afford it. You gotta have some money still coming in. 
And I have people I've had recently, people are like, oh, you know, I don't necessarily agree with your philosophy or I don't necessarily agree with that philosophy when it comes to money. And the, I said, here's the thing. I don't care if you agree with me or not. When you get forced into a situation and the situation that we're in today, this conversation should be bringing coming back up in your mind. We should be strategically working out something so that we can continue to have some kind of income into our business. Going from money to no money for some of us is unimaginable. We still have bills to pay. We still have things that, you know, they ain't cut no mortgages here. They've not cut the credit cards off to where you don't have to pay your bills and pay taxes. Those are still still running. Um, and I have multiple streams of income. I mean, I have six and seven different ways to earn income. And this is really kind of the reason why um, we can't rely on one way to earn income. Um, but I do, I do understand, you know, the resistance. We are trained to be service providers and only earn income from these. In my experience, when I became more mature, my shoulders hurt, my hands would hurt, my knees hurt, my back would hurt. And I knew that I was coming to a point in my career that I wasn't gonna be able to do 20 and 30 people in a day, that my body just physically was not going to allow me to do it. Um, you know, the fact that I have a child, I mean, having a child, you know, there's most where my money goes, but also my time as well. So there's things that I was forced into doing um, that didn't come uh, and I didn't accept them until I had to change. And right now, a lot of us are accepting uh, what is and we're forced into changing the way we do business. And I hope for a lot of you that you really take this time to really look at your business as a whole and almost do like a self audit and just say, how many, how many different ways can my clients give me money? Is it only services? Is it only retail? You know, am I providing as much as I can for my customer to experience me? You know, that's something that I had to do um, recently that I did a, a, a business audit on really, what is it that I really want my business to do? And do I see it long term or am I really only focusing in the next six months or the next year? And, you know, it's, it's a hard thing to do. Um, it's easier when you have someone else come in and give you a little bit of truth that you don't want to admit to. Um, but I think right now, a lot of us have time. We need to do some self-reflection. We need to start doing that stuff that we've been putting off. We need to start implementing our marketing programs. We need to start being consistent in how we purchase and what we spend. We need to start, you know, really controlling how we look at money and how money is of value to us and how do we use it correctly and how we're not using it correctly. Just a lot of self-reflection, but I do want to come and just say, you know, I completely understand um, why we are where we are in the US and in the things that people are trying to implement now, what we need to really focus on as business owners, because like I said, it's not for the faint of heart, what truly is your plan? What is it that you really want to do at the end of the day? You know, we're really saying that this is going to be a two week, supposedly a two or three week, you know, situation. Well, what happens after the two or three weeks when people are going to be out there wanting to come back and do services? Are you ready for that? Are you doing a deep clean in your business? Have you thought about that? You know, and that's the thing that I have already prepared for. Um, we're going to have an influx, just like you are going to have an influx in your business. Are you prepared for that? And what do you think that's going to look like? And how are you going to change some of your SOPs? What are your standard oper standard operation, operating procedures going to look like? How are they now? Do you have an SOP? Do you have an SOP for your employees? Do they know in the event of an emergency or something changes monetarily that they may be having to do this? Like this is something that you definitely need to um, take your business and really start understanding what it is that you need from it, what it provides for you, and then how it can always thrive in any environment, whether you're physically there or not. Can you still do business? Do you allow your customers to experience what you offer even if they don't see you? That's one thing that I was really passionate about and still am very passionate about 
when I started my Safe Skin brand and that certification, all of our certifications are done online. Some are done in person, but majority of them are done via Skype or they're done on Zoom. And people are getting paid for consulting specifically with eczema prone skin people. I mean, we have Catherine who is up in Michigan who has doubled her income because she understood the importance that people who have skin conditions may not come in and get a service. So she added that as a revenue stream. And I'm very proud of her because that is really what it's coming down to. You know, there's some businesses that are in our industry that offer online consultations are you currently online on consultations to people are you talking to them about their skincare concerns do you have that option um, in your business for them if they aren't able to come to you you know there's things that you can do that don't necessarily have to take a whole lot of money to buy product or back bar or a machine you know consultations is what we do day in and day out but can people still consult with you without physically being in your business? Have you ever thought of your business in that way? I encourage you to really start pushing yourself because right now we're forcing ourselves out of the box. We're doing things that we don't normally do. We are having to be very honest and open with our clients who are sick when we normally would take them if they only had a sniffle. You know, we're really starting to get down to what we can allow and what we can allow. And from this point on, our SOPs should always be the same, irregardless if we have something that is an, a, a pandemic or epidemic. It shouldn't matter. From now on, this should be the way we conduct our business to protect us. So, you know, I think it's a long time coming. I think it's something that, you know, in the long term, when we look back on this, I think this is a good thing, you know, that we're taking these type of precautions and we're making them known that this is the type of level of sanitation we offer in our business. And I think it's a good thing. I think the fact that we're going to be start really clamping down on those folks who try to weasel their way in with a sniffle or, or you know, with a cough or with, you know, a fever that we're putting a stop to it because we should have been doing it a long time ago. It should never have taken us to get to this point. So, you know, I used to do my esthetician chat every Tuesday. We had lots of people on it. I started on Periscope and I was there every Tuesday. And then I went to Facebook and then I kind of phased it out because I got a little busy and I really was looking at doing other things. Um, but it's nice to come back and still be able to have these types of conversations because I feel that in our industry, we just don't talk about these things. We're so excited about new services, new machine, a uh, 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 new fad that's come out, but we don't talk about the nitty gritty day to day aesthetics business. We don't talk about the the nitty gritty every day ups and downs that we go on every day as a business owner in the aesthetics industry, providing services for people who are stressed out. Some people are just straight crazy. We don't really ever want to talk about that anymore. You know, when I did my esthetician chats few years ago, I talked about those taboo stuff. You know, I talk about poop, but I talk about people who smell. I talk about people who disrespect our time. I talk about people, you know, who want to come in and lowball us or think this is a flea market and they can argue with us on our prices, you know, but we don't, we still have not picked up those conversations to carry on. We're still, still looking at, you know, oh, what do I need to offer that's new to bring in more people? We've never kind of evolved to there. And I feel like I'm always bringing up those things because those are things that we have to address in order for our business to get to the next level. Rachel on Instagram says, I'm looking into answering client questions on live to keep my clients engaged, even if they're not coming in. Absolutely. You know, I'm a big encourager of being able to ship your products to your customers. If there's no, here's the thing, you have built this trust, you've built this rapport, these clients trust you, but yet we don't close that loop. We build and we build and we bring people in and we give of ourselves, but we don't understand the consumer mind. I understand the consumer mind. Clients love what we do. They love the way their skin feels, but they sometimes just don't want to pay it because we have not given them options outside of giving us money in our business. When I was, you know, years ago, before I even moved here, I still shipped to my clients, even if they didn't see me, even if they didn't see me for a few months, I still would be like, hey girl, what's going on? I know life is busy. I know you ain't got no more cleanser, honey. I've not seen you in three months. So what did you do? And then what happens? It comes out, oh, well, I went to Sephora or I went here and I started doing, you know, 
all this stuff for uh, my face. And this girl said I should use this and it's just not the same. And I'm like, okay, so I'm sending you invoice. I have your stuff in the mail today because I already know. And when can I see you? Because, you know, that stuff done messed you up. So we got to get you back because it's almost summertime. I mean, I had that type of rapport with my customers. And I think we just don't take advantage of that level of trust. And so we are so fearful that they're going to reject us and say, oh, no, I don't want that. Or, or no, I bought this. Or we don't want to, you know, I don't necessarily say push, but we don't want to use our expertise in that way. They're coming to us for a reason. They look to us for help, but we, we kind of, we miss that mark with closing of that relationship. You know, that's the one thing that I think most estheticians that I talk to, that one part, that sale, that closing that sale on retail gets them every time. And I don't quite understand. The other thing is, is if you're not great at retail, then start including the price of the product in your services and just stop. One month, everybody in their facials get a cleanser. The next month, everybody gets a serum. The next month, everyone gets a moisturizer. Then everybody gets a, 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 a sunblock and sun protection. I mean, why, why do we, why don't we utilize our expertise, our teeth and truth and walk in it, you know? Uh, Ebony on Facebook says, I agree with this wholeheartedly. Stop sitting on projects and get them in gear. You have to. That's been your discipline this year, building incomes that don't require my physical labor. Absolutely. Absolutely. I 100% agree on that. It's what I've done my entire aesthetics career has been working on a 24 hour clock. I have to make money in a 24 hour day. I can't limit it to open and close. It has to be 24 hours no matter what. Um, but I think a lot of us are really just fearful or we have been and now we're looking and saying, oh, um, I don't have a choice anymore. You know, some of us don't have any savings. Some of us don't have extra money that we can just, you know, not be open. A lot of us don't have those options. So when you look at your, your, the way you're doing business, it's, it's, it's that SOP. What is a standard operating procedure? Your retail should be a SOP. Your online options should be an SOP. Your including retail into your service should be an SOP. All of that should be in and part of your business protocols and procedures. Because my biggest thing is that once a client has a product in their hands, they're going to come back for it. That's it. There's, there's really, there's, it's very simple. If it's, in, if it's a product in their hand and they walk out of your business with that product, they're going to use it. They're going to like it. They're going to come back and get it. My challenge to you is, are you going to have it available? I have one spa that all they do every month is do a new retail product and it's included in every single uh, service that they have. Because if you move from your facial to your serum and they're out of facial, they're going to buy the skincare product fit cleanser and then they're going to have their serum. So you're almost building their skincare routine by including it in the price of the service. Now, some of y'all ain't even pricing your services right, but we'll leave that for another day. That's where the cost per service comes in with Angela and getting your pricing right. But a lot of us are missing out on the mark because we feel we should have all these products sitting on a shelf somewhere and maybe, you know, talk about it every other client. Or if someone we feel can afford it, then we'll talk about it. That's not our job. Our job is to walk in our expertise and everyone needs some protection. Everyone needs this good serum, especially if we're mature and we're aging. Our job is to provide and walk in our expertise. And when, you know, circumstances and things change, like they've changed now to where we're not able to have people come in, you still need to be able to walk in your expertise. And that should not change if your doors are closed. It should be no different. So I definitely would encourage you, Rachel, you had a great uh, uh, statement about offering, you know, not only consultations, but offering advice to your customers, even if you don't see them. Ebony, the thing with us, and this is what I say with people, it's not until we're forced to do something that we accept change. I've been talking about this for a long time, about being able to have everything available to your customers, but it's not until you're forced into doing something you don't want to do to when you think about, well, dang, if I already had this now, then it wouldn't be that much of a sale. It wouldn't be that much of a stretch. I still would have this. You know, Rudy's in here talking about customer retention. Yes, love. Thank you so much. He's so supportive at the office. On the Facebook. At the office. Okay, love. 
Um, but yeah, you know, it's not until we're forced. And right now we are forced to do things that we have never experienced. We never thought we would be here as business owners. We never thought that we would have to make a choice on whether to keep our doors open or closed. We never thought we would have to make people you know, decide if they're going to be ill and not come in and enforce it and make sure that we are keeping to it. There's a lot of things that are gonna change um, from now on. So, you know, I wanted to come on and do this esthetician chat. I really have had a lot of people reach out to me asking me about my opinions about it. You know, I have my certain opinions. My mind right now is in really go mode. How are we going to continue to do business? Um, and then what happens when all of these bans are lifted and then everybody's gonna be coming, running back. And are you going to be ready then? It's not just when you're not doing business, but are you gonna be ready for the influx of people who are gonna be running to you because they've been cooped up and they want that time? You know, I'm a every two weeker, so I get my facials every two weeks, I get my massage every two weeks. I really don't plan on, you know, stopping those. Those are things that I really wanna continue to do. Um, but what we're going to see is those clients who have been so scared or who are unable to come out, they're going to want to be and, and, and experience life like they always have in the, in the past. And are you ready for that? So while we're on this, you know, curfew, ban, isolation, whatever we wanna call it, are you really thinking about your business in multiple different ways? If not, I wanna challenge you. Start looking at your SOPs. How can people still do business with you without you physically being open? Do you provide a way, very clear instructions on how they can order their products and you get it to them? Do they know this? Do you need to remind them? If they don't know this, you need to remind them. You know, you have to really um, understand what people are doing as consumers because our, our buying hasn't changed. It's just access to you has changed. So what are you doing in your business to change? Tori said, do I offer a business guide? Um, no, I don't offer really a business guide, but the cost per service sheet is by Angela Green. Um, and that's something you can actually download. And that actually tells you how much you should be charging for your services, which is a phenomenal sheet. It's something that every person who does mentoring with me um, or individual coaching with me has to have. Like if you don't know your cost per service, then we have a problem. So I usually start most of my folks there first. And then once we know what you're supposed to be charging, then we can kind of work from there on paying yourself and making sure you're buying correctly and all of those different things. Um, so to answer your question, Tori, on that. So um, on Instagram, ours are mandatory in Michigan as of 3 p.m. So people gotta be in by three o'clock. Yeah. It's changing fast. I think, I think, you know, we're gonna see some things happen in the next two weeks is really what they're giving us. Um, and I think things are gonna be different, but I, I, I encourage you to really take this time out to really start looking at your SOPs, looking at how people are able to do business with you, look at what your business is operating at, where do you want to be, and can you be prepared if something like this happens again? This is a really good time to, um, to do that. All businesses are closed till April uh, today. So all businesses are now closed in Michigan, I'm assuming, until April. So, you know, that's where the online consultations come in. I mean, those of you who are already doing it, kudos to you. Um, but those of you who are not, that could be another thing you add into your SOP. Um, you know, online consultations can be anywhere, Facebook, Zoom, um, you know, uh, FaceTime, whatever. Great opportunity, great tool, still walks in our expertise, people still coming. They're still gonna have face problems. They're still gonna have skincare problems. That's not gonna change just because they're not able to come and get a service. What you need to do is understand in your business, how are you going to expand your reach and provide things to your clients who need them beyond you touching them? So I will come back again, probably towards the end of the week. I'm gonna try to do this twice a week until you know we are, we are up and um, I'm, I'm just really wanting everyone to continue to do what you do, but really think of your business on a different level. Because again, owning a business is not for the faint hearted. It's not for everybody. It, it can be rough for a lot of us. Some of us have cried late in the midnight hour. We've cried ourselves to sleep. 
We have done things that we're not proud of. We have had to sacrifice and give up things that we never thought we would all in the hopes of being a business owner. So this is definitely something that's going to hurt. Um, you know, it's, it's something that we probably really were never prepared for, but here we are. And again, we're, we're going to be okay. As long as we make sure we, we keep our head down, we keep grinding, we keep doing the things that we've been doing. Make sure you really stay to your cancellation policy. Please encourage people who are sick to not come to you if you're still open. Make sure you're showing your, your uh, cleansing and your sanitation protocols. Show it on social media. Show it on Facebook and Instagram. Let people know. Wear your mask. Put your gloves on. The fact that we were still having a debate just a month ago on these daggone gloves, wear your gloves. Stop. We can't play now. Put your gloves on. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. If you're in my Sabres O Wax training group, we will have webinar Wednesday, um, this Wednesday. So make sure you're going to be in there and stay tuned. I can't wait to see you guys in there. We're going to be talking about our products. Um, I'm going to be doing some live training on Wednesday. Okay. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye.